Here we're going to machine the other side of this um, this part here. This this is kind of a consumable um, drill uh, guide thing that I'm making for this part because I have to drill these holes and they intersect a bore and this is going to be the part that's in the bore that gets basically consumed by drilling that I've been explaining in this video. But anyway, the machine at the end of the at the end of the program it comes up to this position and it positions as you saw earlier in the video this slot that I have machine in the part so I can orient the part and so this is kind of sort of interesting the way this setup works that I, I milled this slot in here intentionally so that I could use it for an alignment feature to mill the other slot in the part see the finished part looks like this where it has this uh, kind of a key slot or whatever you call it on both sides and they need to be more or less oriented in the same position on both ends of the part well if, if you didn't have something to go by when you put it in the chuck this way you you um, there would be no way to indicate back here or it'd be very difficult if you could do it at all and so I just milled this feature in the part which doesn't interfere with the uh, function of the part so how do I do this actual setup to align to this next part? I've, I've already finished this part. So I take this out of the chuck here and sort of get a new part ready to go in there. Which this one does, it doesn't have this machine on this side. So I just stick it in here and, and bring the chuck almost closed onto it but so where I can still move it in in the jaws or rotate it and then I'm going to jog I, I position the machine intentionally with the the C axis 
at 90 degrees because the zero point is actually 90 degrees this way rotates back so I positioned it with the C at 90 degrees and I brought this tool with this uh, gauge pin that fits my slot up here on Y0 and up close to the part at the end of the program so that I could just jog it up here and I can jog this um, this tool down and position it close to the top of that slot. Now what I have to do is sort of rotate this around until I'm lined up. First I gotta put my parallel, I forgot one thing. I've been putting a parallel behind here and holding it with a magnet just so I, I know how far to push this in so I don't have to keep setting my Z0 on this thing. So I jog it close. This is kind of hard to do because you have to uh, get that lined up. And then I push this in here and tighten up the chuck. While I'm pushing, while I'm pushing it back against the parallel, and tighten it. I mean, you can't see probably, but I'm tight. I'm actually putting the chuck wrench down here because I can't fit it in between the spindle up here of the um, the spindle face. If I move back a little bit. The spindle face is too close here to put it in here, so I'm putting it here. It's a little bit awkward. but I don't have to tighten too tight on there. And then, of course, don't forget to pull the parallel out. So now, that's lined up with my, uh, my Y0 this way. Y is this way on this machine. And then when I, I jog this up out of the way now, and out of the part, now I'm, I'm lined up this way and I push the part back against the parallel so I can skim the face with a turning tool and mill my, my slot. It'll rotate the 90 degrees over this way and I can mill the slot in the face of the part. Okay, let's see if I can explain what I'm trying to do here. The part you're, you're seeing me machine is this end piece to this, uh, I, I'll call it this uh, sacrificial drill. Uh, fixture I guess you might call it or I'll call it that and what is this thing gonna do exactly on the part let me let me see if I can uh, unhide the part here real quickly the part here has this hole drilled up in it but they also have these holes that are drilled so they intersect the bore so let's let's cut a um, section let me turn off the fixture and you can see these holes right here See, a greater percentage of the hole actually intersects the bore. And I know you're saying to yourself, well, why don't you just uh, drill the holes first and then drill this bigger, this bigger hole up to them? And that would kind of solve the problem, but there's, a, there's an issue with that is that there's, this hole is already mostly drilled in here in the part the way I received it, so I can't really do that. Let me, let me uh, kind of if I can uh, select a section through this part of the part here. Let's see if I can do this. It's kind of hard to, okay. So these holes, if you see them, are mostly in the, in the bore, the hole. You, you, you can't drill a hole like this when it's intersecting another hole. The, the drill bit will just deflect. And they do have a little bit of a close tolerance on these diameters and it just wouldn't work because the center line of the drill is is mostly in the hole and also they um i don't know if i drew it here let me just draw another circle just to give you a visualization they've already drilled a a hole that's 1.4 inches in diameter up here make that hidden line so the hole is already that big in diameter as in the material as I received it 
and then I have to open it up to just a little bit less than an inch and a half. So what I intend to do is drill the hole out to size and then I'm going to put my um, drill fixture in there. So let me let me take the section away again. And and this part you're seeing is going to um, if you can see it there is going to be supporting the drill as it drills through. And it's and the, the pieces I'm making here are of the same type of material. This is titanium material and these pieces that I showed earlier in the video here are the same exact material as the parts so they'll support the drill properly and you'll notice that it's all right now it's all to one end of the of the sacrificial element and what I can do is flip this thing around so that that um, I can use it twice so I can get two parts out of one piece so the whole the whole fixture looks like this. There's a piece of steel rod that supports this um, piece up in the bore. Now the, the, I've turned the OD of this so it'll have about four thousandths clearance on the ID of that hole, so I can get it in and out of there. Because there's going to be, you know, a little bit of burrs and stuff after you drill the hole. So I don't want to have trouble. And also I made this. Uh, unfortunately I didn't make video of making these two parts but I'll show them to you in the video here but the finished parts I've also tapped a hole in the end of this piece so that I can put a slide hammer on this if I have to 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 extract it out of the hole so you can see this this also has kind of a the same feature as the part you've just been seeing in the video machine into it so it lines up all of this stuff and then then this this is going to screw into the a feature in the part itself with these two holes that are already existing in the part uh, 1024 tapped holes and it'll hold it in these holes here are just for some quarter 20 screws that I haven't drawn that hold the whole thing together which I'll show you in a second here so that's what this is all about and like I said the only way to really practically do this if I turn the part back on here is to support this drill as it goes down through the side of this this hole on each side these two these two uh, drilled holes otherwise you could never do this and because this 1.4 diameter is already drilled up to around about this depth up here I still have to finish the end of this radius on here, but it um, there's just no way you could drill those holes in there. No practical way to do it. So I got to sacrifice this little piece on every part. Well, or, or I can get two parts, like I said earlier, out of each piece. And here's the fixture, and these are the two parts, like I said in the um, CAD model that I didn't really record any video making them but but you can see basically what they are this is just a piece of inch and a quarter uh, drill rod well uh, no it's water hardening drill rod and I just use this because it's already precise and, and uh, I don't have to worry about you know turning it or anything it's already ground to a nice precision diameter so all I gotta do is machine the ends so this end has this little key and actually both ends are, are identical on this this um, shank I'll call it and this end fits on there but there's just two tapped holes and a hole in the middle here that um, well the quarter 20 screws hold it on the end and this tapped hole like I explained earlier is so I can pull it out if I need to because there's really no way to get a hold of it because it's going to be like this far back up in the bore of the part when it's mounted in there and this end I've made these things double-ended like I explained earlier so I can drill one set of holes and then take it off and flip it around and drill another set of holes so I can get two parts for every one of these things and I've got uh, I've got what two four six eight nine of them so I could get 18 parts in theory with these um, so far there isn't that many parts to machine yet but there may be I think I've got actual uh, 
I'm, pieces were uh, 12 parts right at the moment. So this material is, is um, as close as I could get to the actual material that's the same material of the part so that it should have the same, you know, more or less properties when I drill through it. So I'm not deflecting the drill one way or the other. And like I said, there's 4,000 smaller diameter than the, than the hole I'm going to put in there. So it, there'll be roughly 2,000 clearance on each side which shouldn't really affect the drilling part at all but it'll give me enough so I can because it, there'll be a slight burr left by the drill and I have to pull it out of the hole so anyway just one more thing that needs to be made to do these parts